Hey guys, welcome back to the String Things channel. Oh, it feels like it's been a little while. Um, if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Thanks for joining me. My name is Mel. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in Vancouver, and this channel is dedicated to my knitting hobby. I knit for myself and for my daughter Darcy, and she just turned two. So I generally do uh, traditional knitting podcast episodes, but today is not one of those. Uh, today is a spotlight on my latest FO, which is a Chantilly cardigan. And if you watched my last podcast episode, uh, that's number nine, I explained how I was pretty much done, but playing yarn chicken to finish up the collar. So a few things to say before we get into this, you know, my first go at vlog, um, documenting this bit of adventure and learning experience I had, I want to quickly say that and also emphasize that there is absolutely nothing wrong with the pattern. Um, Chantilly Cardigan, it's a paid for pattern. The designer is Laura of Penrose Knits and it's a great pattern. Also, nothing wrong with the yarn I used. Uh, so both the yarns are local to me hand dyed yarns that I purchased at Knit City and nothing wrong with those. What it ultimately came down uh, to was size and I don't want to be um, too redundant or anything so I'm not going to get into details of it because you will hear past me explain the whole process um, not too uh, long from now. And lastly, before we get into um, this vlog, I also wanted to mention that I'm one of those people who likes to read up on the model's measurements as well as the size and measurements of the garment that a model is wearing. However, I understand that there's, you know, a percentage of people who don't want to see or hear body measurements um, in wherever, whichever videos they're watching. And I can understand that for some people that does more harm than good. So in this video, I've tried really hard not to mention any body measurements of myself. There are a few instances where I do mention ease, um, but there will be no measurements of say the garment or of my body. However, if you're one of the former people like me and like that bit of extra information, I will be included um, at the end of the description box. I'm going to have a large heading um, capital letters, detailed measurements, and below that I'll put on my own measurements and the amount of ease I have in particular places. I don't think I'm going to be putting in actual finished garment measurements because that is information that's in the pattern. Again, it's a paid pattern, so that would be irresponsible of me to put that in there. Um, I won't be putting ease in, say, like a lot of different places because then you would of course figure out the finished measurements but I'm going to provide um, it in places where I think it's going to give you the best chance of making an informed decision about what size to make for yourself. So there's not going to be any other information past that point of detailed measurements so don't worry you won't be missing anything past that. Um, but just so you know, it's there. Stop scrolling when you see that heading if you don't want to see any body measurements. Um, on the flip side, keep scrolling if you want to see that. So without further delay, uh, let's get into this. Again, this was kind of my first go at kind of creating a vlog. There's going to be some chatty bits. There's going to be some musical bits. Um, Darcy is included, as well as my cat, of course, because he just makes his way in there when he can. But uh, sit back, enjoy, grab a nice warm beverage if you haven't already, and I'll meet you guys back here uh, with my final thoughts. Hey guys, Mel here. I'm just popping in uh, real quick because this Chantilly cardigan really is turning into quite an adventure. Um, sorry, the audio is going to sound a little bit funky because I didn't bother plugging in the mic because I just wanted to get this out of my system. So in my last 
uh, episode number nine, I showed that I was pretty much done the cardigan and all I had to do was knit the collar. I also mentioned how I was essentially playing yarn chicken and major concern about whether I even had enough yarn to knit the collar. So spoiler alert, I knit the collar. Um, in case anyone didn't see my quick story on Instagram. And I had to use the Siri alpaca lace for the ruffle on the collar. Now initially I did not plan for that. I really wanted to use the fingering weight yarn for the ruffle just like Laura's um, original sample. I, for my personal like wear and taste, I like the fingering weight look. There are some beautiful versions uh, with the ruffle on them but it's just I'm not that girly um, and me even just knitting this cardigan is essentially quite you know a surprise to people who know me um, my one of my cousins was saying that she she actually did use the word surprise in my choice of uh, knitting this one up so I pretty much have it done I mean like it is done no buttons are sewn in um, the ends haven't been weaved in, but it's essentially a full cardigan. Now, the problem I have with it is that I really don't like the Surrey Alpaca ruffle, but I don't have any more yarn. So I got in touch with Michelle at Isis Fiber Arts, where I purchased the fingering weight yarn from. Fortunately, she still has skeins left from the same dye lot um, that I ordered from. And since I'm ordering more yarn anyways, I have decided to purchase additional yarn and I'm going to frog the cardigan, start again, and make a larger size. <laughs> um, I initially made a big mistake when I was buying yarn. So the pattern was released on a Friday and it happened to be a Friday before I went to Knit City and I thought perfect I'm going to find some special yarn for my Chantilly cardigan at Knit City. Went to Knit City, um, at Knit City Michelle didn't actually have enough of the fingering weight yarn there but I knew in what I had, um, I knew how many more skeins I would need to order. Now when I ordered that yarn I did not look at the pattern again and what happened was that I looked and like made up a number for the actual uh, amount of yarn needed to knit this cardigan. So one, I made the mistake of assuming that I was probably going to be knitting the smallest size because I, for almost every pattern I've knit, I knit the smallest size. Even though I wouldn't consider myself to be like you know very small that's just how it works out with the size offerings with a lot of patterns and second uh, I read the wrong number so I thought the amount of yarn needed in meters I thought it said 1200 meters so each skein of the fingering weight yarn is 400 meters and I planned to buy four so that'd be 1600 meters that gives me a full skein of you know any modifications needed I had extra yarn when I actually got all the yarn delivered to me and did a swatch figured out my gauge and everything sat down and looked at the sizing I realized that the smallest size needs 1500 meters not 1200 meters and so I only had 1600 meters and I did two swatches so if you've seen the episode you know that um, my plan was to unravel those swatches and I did and that gave me enough yarn to do, you know, the main part of the color. But, you know, I was hoping because I was knitting a little bit off gauge that my sweater would turn out between size two and three. However, trying it on is just, it's just too fitted for my, my liking. And I know Laura's sample, she has four inches of positive ease on hers and mine uh, I only have about an inch and a half and I really don't like that fit especially with the 
um, how much volume or how large the collar is. I really think the more slouchy fit that Laura shows in her snowball would be much better. Sorry, uh, that's Darcy waiting a little bit. Hey, sweetie, I'm in here. You want to say hi? Yes. Oh, you, they can't see. Can't see you in the screen. Come over here. Say hello. Ah, hi. <laughs> um, oh, here. She's asking for her tablet. Okay. Um, do you want to feed your caterpillar? Yeah, do you want to feed him some fruit? Yeah. Okay, let's get it loaded up. Do you want to go back to the couch? couch? Yeah, here, can you take it? Mommy's almost done. I'll help you in a second. I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, I'll meet you at the couch. Okay. Um, yeah, it really did not end up with as much positive ease as I would like. And the type of uh, yarn that is being a superwash nylon um, blend, I don't think I can like aggressively block it to the size that I want to get. That's just gonna like maybe distort or you know change up the the fabric a little too much that I've knitted up. So I've ordered enough yarn to make a proper size three, I think it is. And, um, yeah, the other thing that happened, which I never mentioned before, is that I think I actually knit it too short, and I think my sleeves are too short. So I think with wear, like when you first try it on, sometimes the sleeves seem okay, and then you start wearing it, and like when you're moving around, it's like the sleeve gets like eaten up by like your elbow or your armpit. So I've already noticed that already, and it's that like, um, I guess you could call it bracelet length right now, but it's just not as baggy as I would like it. Um, I can't remember the the name of the maker who, I mean, she tested it for Laura and she's sitting on a chair and she's got a purple version and you can tell her fabric is obviously like more drapey and lighter than mine because I'm using heavy fingering. But the way her sleeve just like flows and just kind of larger and her drop shoulder like actually drops a lot lower than where mine's going. So I think, yeah, it's, it's going to hurt. Um, I don't want to think of it as time wasted though. It's, you know, time that I knit something and I enjoyed knitting with the yarn and there's nothing wrong with the pattern at all. I should have started that off that first. I'll be there in just a second, sweetie. Okay. I'm coming. Okay. I'm really regretting how I did the really quick setup of this camera now because I'm like literally squatting and looking at a shelf right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I really should have started off by saying that there is absolutely nothing wrong with the pattern. Um, all how I've gotten to this point, it's all based on decisions, poor decisions that I made for myself. And, you know, thinking that I could just make it work with the amount of yarn I had, um, it didn't turn out. And, but you know what, that's okay. Now I know that I don't like this style of cardigan with only uh, one and a half inches of positive ease. And, yeah, that length really that I made for myself doesn't work. Like, it's not even long enough to actually have some length to tuck in my pants and have it, you know, kind of roll over. It's actually just above my high-waisted jeans. Not super high-waisted, but they are high-waisted and that's just gonna, with the ribbing style and how tight it is around my waist, it's just gonna like always be cinching up. Which, if I'm wearing a skirt or a dress, totally fine, but with pants, that's going to aggravate me. <laughs> I'm going to be always trying to pull it down. So, and the sleeves as well, I'm always going to be trying to pull it down. So I think, yeah, again, not time wasted. I did something, I tried it, it didn't work out. I still really like the yarn. Oh my God, the drilling is starting from my neighbors. There's so many renovations going on around us right now. Hi, sweetie, I know it's scary. It's okay. Um, but yeah, that is where I'm at. Um, as I said, I've ordered the yarn from Michelle. Just got to wait for that to arrive. But I am going to start frogging the sweater. 
and because I'm using the exact same yarn, I'm not going to bother trying to separate the alpaca strand from the fingering. I'm just going to use it as is. And yeah, let's hope the second time around uh, is a lot better. Now I'm a lot more conscious of what, you know, areas I need to pay attention to, like sleep length and circumference and all that. And actually, oh, try it on more often. Just hold down, sweetie. I'll be there in a second. And yeah, okay. Darcy clearly needs me right now, so I gotta go. Hi, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll help you. Would you, would you like to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Get a good look at this because it's gonna get frogged. And there's Tiberius. Hey guys, so uh, it's time. I I don't need to wait until the additional yarn arrives to frog the sweater. I'm I'm gonna take the plunge and I'm gonna start frogging. The Chantilly cardigan. I uh, put Darcy in her room for her nap time. I can still hear her though. It takes her a little while to fall asleep. But um, I've got Retro Claude playing on YouTube. Check her out if you haven't. She knits. She sews. Um, yeah. Here's the last final goodbye, I guess. Bye bye, Chantilly cardigan. That's too small for me. All right. Um, enjoy watching me try to frog. It's probably gonna snag a few times. The cereal alpaca likes to get tangled a little bit. So yeah, I'm not sure how much I'll actually end up putting in. Uh, I am not sure how much of this frogging process will actually make it into the final video, but enjoy what you do get to see. <laughs> Alright, bye! I'm too lazy to move the camera up, so I'm awkwardly laying on my table. Update for you guys. I finally finished frogging the ruffle. My goodness, this is two strands of the Surreal Pocket Lace held together, and no, I'm not going to attempt to separate those two strands right now. And there were many a time where I wanted to just go to the into my kitchen and grab scissors and just cut it out but I don't want to waste yarn this is a really lovely um, Surrey alpaca and I obviously love the color of it so I'm going to keep it uh, perhaps something I can work with um, uh, like a hat or something like that I don't know we shall see so now I'm on to frogging the main part of the collar which is a single strand up fingering with the um, Surrey and I think it's gonna go a lot quicker. Hey guys, it's been about an hour. I have frogged the collar and both sleeves and now it's time for the body and then I'll be done. So I'm hoping uh, I can get this done before Darcy wakes up and cast on the larger size tonight. I did a tubular bind off on 
the hem of the body or the end of the body. So I just gotta undo that and then attach it to my winder and good to go. Please enjoy this view of Darcy playing with her Lego and her new bus, which she got for her birthday. I'm going to provide the day to update. So last night I cast on a size three, but I was still having doubt about whether it was actually large enough for me. So I also cast on the size four and the plan is to knit both to the point where I've created the back panel and one of the fronts to the point where you would join for the armhole. Try that on and decide from there whether I want to continue from the size three or the size four. Hey guys, welcome to day four of the remaking of my Chantilly cardigan. And nope, you didn't just fall asleep and miss part of, you know, day three video footage because I didn't pick up the camera uh, once yesterday. Just didn't feel like it and there wasn't anything super important to uh, update on that day so here I am day four progress is coming along nicely I came to the point where I had to make the decision whether to continue with knitting up the size four or to go back to the size three uh, back panel that I had started and I've decided to stick with size four because I like how the drop shoulder or where that line is um, ending up on my body. This uh, fabric, this yarn, the fingering weight yarn that I'm using is a superwash merino nylon blend and I think due to the nylon content it, in my experience anyways, when I did block the completed size 2, it really didn't change much um, in size after blocking so I think that nylon is really helping it to retain its shape so pretty much what I'm knitting is the size that it's going to be um, at the end um, but yeah so the issue with sticking with a size 4 however is the amount of positive ease around my waist and back area so the size 2 was quite fitted um, again I only had I think it was like an inch and a half to two inches of positive ease which was not nearly as much as I would like for my fit uh, but the measurements of the size four would give me I think too much positive ease just around like my waist area especially since there's quite a difference between the width of my shoulders uh, down to the size of my waist so to keep the ease relatively consistent in the back i'm going to add some shaping to keep the relative ease um, kind of the same and the way i'm going to do the shaping i don't want that uh, my line of decreases to continue all the way down to the ribbing and that's because um, well after my waist my body you know goes out again towards my hips so I don't want to make the bottom of the cardigan uh, too small or too snug around my hips it's really just reducing any um, bulk and extra fabric around the natural waist area and specifically just in the back I like how the positive ease is working out in the front so far and I didn't want to do any decreases on the sides or like under the arms because I was afraid of the overall shape looking too bat winged like and yeah so how I'm doing that is kind of mimicking a technique used in sewing so if you think about a fitted bodice of a dress for example 
when you look at the back, you might see two lines or two seams along the back. And that's essentially what I'll be creating on the back of my cardigan. Now there's no exact science that I'm following in terms of placement of this shaping. I just got to a point and I remembered, oh yeah, right, I want to do some shaping. So I, I happen to be um, at the point around where you would have the second uh, second buttonhole down and that's where I've started my shaping which is um, above my natural waist and I hope to finish the shaping you know at my waist or just below so there's like I don't know this section <laughs> this size and again no exact science and in terms of how many decreases to do I know not to decrease to the number of stitches um, that a size two would have for the body and so I already said I don't like size four so I'm aiming for the size three number of stitches that the back panel would have and I'm decreasing two stitches per row and what I did was so here's the markers which mark the start of the shoulders I followed that those two columns down and so I have two markers here so this is the back and I'm doing a decrease on the outside of each of those markers and I am making sure that the decreases uh, lean towards the center of the garment um, I think that just will look nicer rather than going out you know going in creating that V shape but whether it's even going to be noticeable I don't know uh, so that's where I'm at right now um, again I don't need to do too many decreases so I'm not decreasing on every right side row I'm decreasing on every other right side row and when I get to that number of decreases you know I'll try it again see if it works or not if I did too quickly with every other right side row then I'll just rip back. <laughs> um, I think it's quite clear that I'm not afraid to frog so yeah that's where I'm at. Um, progress is coming along nicely. Uh, I can't really see. It might look huge but again um, it's drop shoulder so remember that this goes like past my arm and down and yeah so that's uh day four that's the uh midday update i forgot to add so another issue i had with the size two and like i do have row gauge but i think like i'm I think I have a bit of a long torso because I followed the pattern exactly for how many rows you have between the buttonholes but my cardigan was too short and you know not a lot too short but I wouldn't be able to tuck it in my pants for example just how Laura has in her her sample photo I like that look um, so I wasn't close to achieving that uh, with me going with size 4 where the garment joins in the center I, it is a little bit lower than where the size 2 was hitting me but I was still worried about ending up with too short of cardigan so I have increased the number of rows between the buttonholes just slightly um, hopefully I've done enough uh, to get enough length so that I can do that tucked in look um, but yeah again if it's not I'll have to frog and go back to where the second buttonhole starts um, yeah a lot of let's see how it goes <laughs> is how this cardigan is going
guys, it's day five. Uh, quick update for you guys while my husband's not here. Uh, it's Saturday, so knitting time is naturally reduced because I hang out uh, with my family more. And my last update, I said I was around the second buttonhole. I'm now almost at the point to do the fourth buttonhole. I did my decreases in the center back and I decreased to the number of stitches for the back panel um, for a size three and then minus two. So I did an additional two decreases just because I felt like it. Uh, again, nothing is going along to any sort of exact science or formula. A lot of this is just kind of what I feel at the time. And that's where I am at. Um, I'm still like enjoying working on this. I haven't had any point where I felt like, what have I got myself into? Uh, why did I do this? No. I'm very much looking forward to um, getting this done, and but I'm enjoying the process uh, and I've got no real pressing deadline. I know I said I wanted to wear this for Christmas dinner, which I very much um, highly likely that I will get this done um, in advance of Christmas dinner, but it's just nice to enjoy the process and not be a, you know, a completely um, dominant product knitter at this point and yeah that's where I am day five Good morning! <laughs> How's it going, sweetie? Did you have a good sleep? <laughs> oh, you got some toys in your bed. Oh, bless you. Can you say good morning? One, two, okay, I'll get you out of there. Monday, it's day seven of the remaking of my Chantilly cardigan, and I'm just about done with the body portion. I've done the last buttonhole and I'm on the ribbing, so that I'll show how it's fitting right now. Hi, Darcy. What's up? You need some milk? Yeah. Milk? Okay, I'll be right there. Let's go get it. Okay. I don't know how long I have until Darcy comes running back in, but let me try to get the shoulders. Where do we go? The right goes over the left. But yeah, it sits really nicely over my hips right now, which are here. So the amount of positive ease is great. I've got a straight line drape going down my back. And once I get the sleeves in, yeah, that's like as expected with the drop shoulder. I'll have like the bulk here. I don't think it's gonna look too bad in the back. I think the V-neck right now Getting me at a good spot, like I'll still have coverage if I was wanting to wear like low neck top underneath. But yeah, it's a lot more positive ease than the previous one, but I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to get the sleeves on and see like how it uh, drapes over my shoulders. I really want the like 
almost an off shoulder look with the collar. I think that'll look very um, feminine, I guess it could be the word because I can't think of any other words. But uh, there we go. Hey guys, we're going old school. Hopefully it's not too shaky, but I am nearing the end of the ribbing on the body. And I like to do a tubular bind off. So that means some rows of double knitting and then doing that invisible bind off with uh, the needle. When I do the rows of double knitting, I like to go down a needle size. So I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles right now for the ribbing and I'm going to switch to... I just put my noodles down on the couch somewhere and I don't know where they are. I will find them in a moment. Uh, I would normally switch to a 4 millimeter needle, but I don't know where they are. Probably in a whip somewhere. Um, so I grab my 3.75 millimeter needles and I'll just make sure I don't um, pull too tightly. Um, but I do that so that the tube doesn't get too big and like bulge or flare out at the bottom. I like a really neat edge. And I still prefer doing the double knit rows over just going from straight ribbing to an invisible bind off, I think just creates a nicer, cleaner edge. And yes, it is a lot more work, but in my opinion, it's always worth it. So that's where I'm at right now. Hey guys, it's day eight and I have decided that uh, my last cake of frog yarn was three strands, so two strands of fingering, one strand of Surya pocket lace, and I've decided that I want to, you know, separate all the strands and I'm going to work on the color um, before doing the sleeves. I'm wearing all black, I'm covered in Surrey wearing my yarn knitting socks kindly gifted to me from one of my cousins and yeah I, I don't know why I decided to do this it's uh it's kind of one of those things I've started it and now I need to finish it so that's what I'm going to be doing um I've got you know less than half of the cake left to separate and uh Hopefully I'll be knitting soon. Welcome to my uh, sage ramen disaster that I've got going on here. Um, now separating the fingering strands and just, I don't know, I thought, here, here, I'll take a, let's take a walk together. I thought I'd just unwind the cake. Um, because it was getting snagged and uh, yeah I'm gonna stop here before you see my mess because I don't tidy up when Darcy goes for a nap so it's a disaster over there so we'll just stop our walk here and come back over here but yeah um, I did not expect this to take um, this long or as long as I've been working away at this but I guess on the good side I've been giving my body a break I haven't done any knitting whatsoever today and my body is feeling a lot better i'm feeling really hopeful i'll be able to play volleyball tomorrow night so yeah now let's just hope i can clean all this up before darcy wakes up from her nap
Hey guys, it's day... Mm, what day is it? Nine? Whatever, it's Tuesday. No. Gosh. It is Wednesday. I think it's actually day 10 then. Uh, I don't know. Wow, good start. Good start. Um, speaking of good starts, more like no starts. So... My battery is going to die. Of course it is. One moment, guys. Okay, new battery. You're going to hear Darcy's TV show in the background right now because it's uh, not quite nap time yet. But uh, whatever day number it is, it's Wednesday. Today was essentially supposed to be another kind of rest day from knitting for me. Um, last night I did uh, work on the collar um, because the I blocked the body of the sweater or the cardigan and it dried a lot faster than I thought it would which is like nice but not so nice when I'm supposed to be resting my body but anyways today was supposed to be kind of another rest day because it, uh, I was supposed to take Darcy to the doctors um, so got ready, went out to my vehicle, I put her in her car seat, shut the back door, and the front passenger window shattered. I'm, I'm very thankful that it wasn't the actual rear passenger window so that, you know, no glass uh, came near Darcy at all when it shattered, but yeah. So, with that happening, I was like, well, I definitely can't drive to the doctor's office like this with, you know, an open window by the time, like, even if I could, like, tape it shut or anything, I just, like, it's not something I'm comfortable with driving. And so I called my husband and he said, yeah, let's just move it inside the parkade, uh, go to start my vehicle, and it doesn't. The battery's dead. Of course. Like, my luck. Of course. Um, luckily I do have a little booster pack, so I jump started uh, my truck myself and moved it inside, had to call the doctor's office, said there was no way we were going to be making it there on time, so that's been rescheduled, and I just felt totally, like, defeated after. Darcy was so great the whole time, just, like, sitting in her car seat while I was figuring out how to, uh, jump start the truck. Yeah, it's about time to get Darcy prepped and ready for nap time and then I'm going to have lunch and maybe work a couple rows on the collar, maybe just work on video editing instead and make sure I don't compromise my body in any way before tonight's volleyball game. Hi sweetie! Hello! Oh. That sounds like the washing machine. I think that means Snuffles is ready to go into the dryer. Should we go put Snuffles in the dryer? Okay. Yeah, okay. She asked for her bear to be washed. So uh, we had put it in the washing machine and it's now ready to go in the dryer. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go get that done and I'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs> guys, this is the week that just keeps on giving. So, had the smashed window. Or the shattered window, I should say shattered, because no one physically smashed it on my vehicle. Uh, got it fixed, and Darcy is spending a couple hours at my sister's for a little playtime, one-on-one -on -one time with her auntie. I just drove and dropped her off, and the plan was to, you know, drive to the pet store, or the grocery store. Oh, gotta stop the Simba. That's not your food, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not supposed to let the neighbor's cat eat uh, Tiberius's food. I guess depending on what it is. Oh my god. He is licking the pan that I haven't cleaned yet that I made with eggs. Something about this cat loves dirty pans from cooking eggs. Simba, you silly kitty. Anyways, back to uh, dropped RC off, 
plan was to go to the pet store, grocery store, come home, and just like have a little bit of time to myself. And then it all worked, parked at the parking lot where the pet store and the grocery store is. And I didn't even pack my wallet. I remember thinking like, don't forget your wallet. And I don't carry a purse or anything, so I need to carry like, remember to grab this tiny little thing, card wallet. So come back home to recollect, calm myself down, finish my coffee that I didn't get to finish before dropping Darcy off at my sister's. Tiberius wants to look. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. So last night I finished off the ruffle on the collar and in my opinion I think this looks so much better than using the Siri for the ruffle. The color is coming out a little bit uh, like desaturated like it's not actually this pale in real life this color it's a little bit more green but the point is just to show you where I'm at. So it's pretty much dry. And next is just the sleeves. Very excited, guys. Um, I'll do a little try on of this. Ah, Tiberius. Are you wanting my attention? Because you know your sister's not home anymore. Hey, buddy. Uh, Tiberius is more assertive about getting attention now, now that he's not an only child. Oh, your claw is actually stuck in my jacket. There we go. I hope he didn't work my jacket. Anyways, guys, um, happy Friday. Hey guys, I wanted to show you the collar. I've decided to not rush out to the store. Um, I'm just gonna wait till it's almost time to pick up Darcy, do the shop, pick up Darcy, and then come home. I just, otherwise if I go out now, I come home, I'll have a few minutes, and then I have to like go out again. It's just, that's just too much, um, for my brain to handle today. <laughs> so, here is how the collar looks, and I think it looks really good, guys. Yeah, I might have to like re-block the ruffle a bit in a couple spots where I think I I spread it out too much. There it is in the back. I think yeah, I'm a lot happier with how this is looking compared to previously had. Now just imagine the sleeves pulling the shoulder down there. One cake, one hank, and since I was, um, you know, had the yarn winder out, I decided to separate the two series strands that I'd held together to do the ruffle on the original uh, cardigan. So here they are separated out. It took some time, yes, but I figured better do it now or else it may never get done. And um, 
I just want to make sure I use up all the Siri that I have before winding up a new hank. Mama. Does Mama make things like that? And just like that, um, my time alone is up. Uh, I've got to tidy up here, head out to my errands, pet store, grocery store, go pick up Darcy. Yeah, it always, alone time always flies by so quickly. So I think, yeah, I spent about an hour, I don't know, sipping my coffee, winding up my yarn, but kind of just doing nothing because Sometimes it's really good to just do nothing, no pressure. Good morning guys, it's Thursday. I had volleyball last night and I'm feeling more sore than I usually am, but I played a different position last night. But anyways, wanted to show you that my cardigan is yet again on the blocking mats, but hopefully this is the very last time. I reblocked part of the ruffle because I spread it out in a couple spots. So I just wanted to um, block it in its more true kind of bunched up ruffle um, state. And I'm just blocking out the armholes now. It's still a little bit wet from last night, but all good. And then it's all about uh, weaving in my ends and sewing on buttons. So. Yeah, it feels weird to not be sneaking in some rows on this this morning with my coffee. I'm all the knitting is done and yeah, it's such a weird feeling, but here she is. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the Chantilly journey. Um, after all said and done, I'm really happy that I made the decision to frog the cardigan because here it is. I, I've got something that, you know, for me, in my opinion, my preference is much more wearable than the first version, which was, you know, too short, too tight. You know, the sleeves were too fitted for my liking. I didn't like the Siri uh, ruffle. So for me, it was all worth it. And the beauty of knitting, being able to unravel and reuse yarn was great. Um, separating the strands um, was not as terrible as you, you know, could imagine. However, I'm using superwash yarn, so the apaca doesn't really stick to the fingering uh, merino nylon blend yarn like it would uh, had it would if I was using like a woolly yarn um, yeah because especially after you've like washed and blocked something those fibers probably start to mingle a little bit more but anyways I digress uh, let's get into um, more final thoughts um, about this cardigan so quick recap I cast on a size 4 and that was because I wanted, you know, wider shoulders. I think in relation to, or like my body proportions, I think my shoulders are quite wide um, relative to my waist and my bust. So I wanted, you know, to accommodate my shoulders and have a really nice, like low drop shoulder line, hence casting on a size four. Um, then for in the back only, I did decreases um, just to reduce the amount of positive ease and I think it came what kind of close to what a size three um, measurements would be um, but yeah I like all the room that I have really love the fingering yarn used for the ruffle it's like a bit more tame and it's got more structure to it so with blocking it I could you know make it look as you know bunched or as roughly as I wanted to but also sits really nice and flat the downside for using the Siri alpaca is because it's so light and fluffy 
every time you move it kind of like flutters um it's a shame that you know i didn't like the surya pocket because i liked the color like i really wanted to it was an opportunity to show off the actual color of the surya pocket itself but ultimately i was going for um the look of the fingering so really glad that i made that decision so i wanted to note some modifications i did to my cardigan to make it more you know for me i'm very much the type of knitter who makes a pattern work for me makes sure that that garment works for me rather than me trying to conform to what a pattern is telling me to and it's never because i think that a pattern is poorly written um, patterns are guidelines in my opinions so designers follow you know a standard um, size chart however if you don't fit the size chart that the designer is referencing then that garment may not come out as expected so i always I almost always make some sort of modification whether it's due to fit or with aesthetic or with finishing so one thing i did to help with the integrity and to reduce stretching of the back neckline with the drop shoulder there's quite a bit of weight here and like it wants to like fall off my shoulders now you can see a knit fabric is like quite stretchy and I didn't want like that back neck to stretch a lot over time. So right in, I'll just show you here, but you have this bit of a ridge from where you pick up stitches for the collar. So that ridge, but in the back neckline, I went in with a single strand of fingering weight yarn and did a crochet slip stitch all the way through um, to prevent that line from being able to stretch out. So if you try to pull it, um, pull mine, it does not stretch. So that adds to the structural integrity of that line. Uh, another modification I had to do, which was mentioned um, in the blog, was that I increased the number of rows in between um, each button. Now it does say in the pattern that if you don't meet row gauge, you know, take that into consideration when you start to do your buttonholes or you may want to you know count and add another or an extra button than what the pattern says to do so adding an extra button uh, to get that extra length wasn't an option for me because i only had five buttons so and i wasn't going to go back and because these are specially ordered buttons for this garment so for me because of that limitation um, increasing the number of rows between buttons was the way to go and if you're not sure um, whether to do that or just to add another button when you get to the point of making your first buttonhole like don't make the buttonhole yet but based on your row gauge you know and the number of rows that it says in the pattern to do in between the buttons do a quick math calculation to see where you know how much length you're going to have from say this point down and then and include your ribbing and decide for yourself if that's going to be the right length for you or not and if not do a little rejigging if needed um the kind of last modification i did is for you know making up for my purling so I tend to purl loosely. Maybe it's because of continental purling. I don't know. But the transition from a knit stitch to a purl stitch and then a knit stitch for the ribbing and the button band, I find that first purl stitch to be extra loose for whatever reason. However, the purl stitch in between, like after that, is fine. Um, and I noticed this a little bit in the sample photo for the pattern that the purl column gets kind of like stretched out a bit. Um, so to reduce any of that stretching or unevenness, I did I did twisted purl stitches just for the first purls. So here, maybe I'll pull this off a little bit. So there's the first purl. Column here, I flip this inside out. 
see that I have a column of twisted knit stitches, but the other ones are in the usual orientation. So yeah, I only did that on the innermost um, purl stitch, and I think that worked out really well for me. Um, with my cardigan ending up with the amount of positive ease that it has and how it sits while it's buttoned, like maybe I didn't actually need to do that, but that was definitely something that would have been an issue with the first version of this cardigan. So yeah, that's that. Um, one journey done. <laughs> I'm glad to finally get this all out of my system because I feel like I've been holding all of this information in my head for a long time. This was also my first go at monogamous knitting and I did pretty well except for when the cardigan was blocking at one point, not the final blocking, but in between, I caved and I picked up something else, but only once. So it was like 99% monogamous knitting on this. Will I continue monogamous knitting? I don't know. So would I knit this again? Um, so funny thing is that, so today is November 29th, it's Tuesday. It also happens to be the release day of the Chantilly vest. So I have purchased the pattern for the Chantilly vest, um, but in true male nature, I'm considering modifying it and actually adding sleeves. Now you may be asking, well, if you wanted a pullover version, why wouldn't you have just modified the cardigan? Well, there's different, I'd get a different um, and more fitted shoulder with the Chantilly vest because it has a much smaller armhole. And I didn't want to have like a more fitted pullover with the drop shoulder construction. For me, I like drop shoulder construction for oversized, sweater, oversized sweaters, not fitted sweaters. So I don't have any yarn for that, but I bought the pattern anyways. So whether I even, you know, execute that idea or not, I don't know. That could be a next year thing. Um, but yeah. Obviously, I liked it enough because I knit this twice. <laughs> it's a really nice knit, five and a half millimeter needles. It goes by relatively quickly because the gauge is pretty large. Um, five and a half millimeters is not my go-to size, though. I really like working with like four millimeter needles, but the combination of the fingering and the alpaca is just so dreamy soft. Um, that was a big reason um, why I enjoyed it's still the second time around so not only looking forward to having you know a better fitting cardigan but also just feeling that yarn it's a really good like tactile sensory experience and yeah so ah, i'm looking forward to wearing this for christmas dinner that's still the plan also have kind of like a pre-christmas dinner with our friends this weekend so i'll maybe give this a little go again but yeah i'm excited to have this kind of you know girly addition to my wardrobe i'll see maybe i'll share on instagram how i'm styling it for the rest of winter but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed watching this full journey i don't know if i do a vlog again anytime soon but let me know if you liked seeing this or if you want to see more darcy and tiberius probably i mean darcy's pretty darn cute <laughs> if you want to see more from me um please do consider subscribing and until next time guys happy knitting bye